Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 202, a few days before Christmas holiday here, 12-22-2020. Uh, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. We have a small set of us. Most of them here with Bob and Sean and anybody else out there. Feel free to say hi in the chat because we've been doing that roll call. And let's see, what are we talking about today? We are going to do basically triage. Uh, not else, a lot else to talk about, so I figured we'd try to go and have a nice, clean slate going into the new year. Uh, maybe some people will things next week, but we'll at least have everything nice and clean. So we'll get this uh, triage done, we'll get the recording up, and you can uh, keep up with the, the goings-ons, and we'll be talking about 2021. All right, Bob, you ready to go do triage? Let's do it. Finish it off for the year. All right, let's see. Uh, sorry at the top, language cleanup. This is actually, most of these are from you guys. Source, source. Yeah, we should do this. Um, that one's done. Oh. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there was a different... <laughs> so I opened this one, and as you can see, we never triaged it. This, we think, is due to a weirdness in GitHub search. Oh, oh is this the one, that, the ghost issue that was hanging out there yeah. and never talked about? Since yeah. July 21... <laughs> <laughs> right, and so uh, I opened this bug oh, no. and apparently forgot about it and opened a different one um, to cover the, the the SRC attribute, which I then implemented and closed that issue, oh. um, forgetting about this one, which actually has a bit more. Um, and it certainly... The second bullet is interesting to discuss because I think we uh, we did not have consensus on on that one. So it's worth talking about to see if we want to take this issue and actually open it now that it's visible to us <laughs> through something, some bit of magic. All right. So specifically, this one is talking about in the sequence tables, we have explicit elements for all of the standard actions in the one installer. And then you schedule custom elements with the custom element, custom actions with the custom element. Um, and so you can compare that with having things for like install files and launch conditions and all those other elements for standard actions to the fact that we do not have stand or built-in elements for all of these standard directories, like program files folder, uh, desktop folder, so on and so forth. And so that bit of inconsistency is a is a interesting situation. So the idea here is to not have all of those custom elements for the actions, and instead have one the proposal here being standard to go along with action. And then presumably you'd have standard and then the action would be one of the well-known names. Um, so that would be able to be fixed. So we'd know the standard action attribute would have a fixed set of values. Hmm. Thoughts on that one? I, I I go back and forth. I don't really have any preference on that. I think it's interesting because you don't anymore put these standard actions in your sequence very often anymore. Wix does a pretty good job of getting everything in the right place. And instead you put your custom elements after the standard or before the standard action. Or before, yeah. Um, so with you, you just use the custom element with the before or after attribute. Um, I don't have a strong opinion either because this is less common now. Bob, do you have an opinion? Well, yeah, I mean, I opened the issue, so I must have one, right? Not always. Sometimes you're just transcribing <laughs> things, so I, I don't That's want fair. to attribute malice to um, whatever <laughs> one is. Um, ignorance? No, it's, uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm joking. 
<laughs> yes, on that on that fine note. Um, yeah, um, for me, most so I I have two opinions or two thoughts forming my opinion, um, which is that we we should do this. I'm I'm not you know like strongly tied to it, but um, two reasons being one, uh, there's an asymmetry between standard actions and custom actions. Um, and, and yeah, my proposal was you have a standard element with an action attribute, which matches the custom element with the action attribute. Um, and the second part of that is, yeah, the, the, it, it feels that the, the value that this feature brings, as you point out, is not often needed anymore. Um, and I'd argue, really, it hasn't really been that needed for you know, many years, since basically Wix 3. I remember there was a thing, in, and I think this was even resolved in Wix 2, by Wix 2 RTM. Wix 2, there was occasionally you wanted to reschedule launch conditions. Mm-hmm. After because the search. default scheduling was was before app search, which is just dumb. So, but I think that was fixed. So yeah, we did change it. Yeah. You know, so in my mind, the fact that the standard actions occupy elements in the root namespace is, is you know brings attention to them in a way that is way out of proportion to the value that the the, the, the rescheduling ability brings. So then I was like, yeah, why not go for the symmetry and, and clean up the, the schema? The parallel then would be a, a well-known directory element or standard directory element or built-in directory element or something like that for directories as well? Uh, I had not gone that far. The fact that today there we don't distinguish between well-known directories and author directories. Um, they both are referred to in the same way, which, you know, if you wanted to go that route, you could just as easily say the, you know, the child elements of the sequence elements could just be action. Right. We don't really need to distinguish between standard and, and custom actions. Well, except that we do, because they end up being two different table references, and that's why we did it. Except you could say if it's a standard action, then only... Well, if, I see. If it's in the list, then if the compiler then, knew the list... If it's not in the list, then it is a custom action ref. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. See, it's a, again, it's a little different because today with directories, we require the ref to be resolved. <sighs> to even to program files folder has to be defined somewhere. Uh, right. Where an action does not have to be defined. Because we predefine. The well, we, well, I take that back. No, because we have custom, therefore the action has to be set. So. Right. Um. Now, all this said, I haven't even looked at, you know, what the implementation looked like for this. You know, yeah, it's not going to matter. Well, sorry, I, I'm I'm suggesting, you know, we know there isn't a big win for this. Um, this is the, you know, hey, we're in a, we're in a major version breaking change window here. So if we wanted to do it now is the time. It, there aren't a lot of benefits. So we could just as easily say, eh, it's not worth it. Um, yeah, there would be some work. We'd have to clean up the compiler. We'd have to clean up the converter. And the decompiler. I always forget the decompiler. <laughs> <laughs> to my detriment. Sean, do you have any opinions? Not really. I mean, it's it's probably not worth it. <laughs> It's a lot of work to do the converter and the decompiler. 
That's, I, I don't think it's it's probably not a lot of work. It's probably a little bit of work, but you can you know you can, even a little bit of work is you know distracting if it doesn't bring us some benefit. So I think the directory one's even more interesting though. The well-known directory concept. Um, how did you implement uh, per? I forget what you call it. Program files sixty-four thirty-two. Because mm. that's not a real ID. No, I made it a I made it a well-known directory. And then there's code to handle it, to to flip it back and forth. But just that ID uh, and system. And oh, files. right, right. Yeah. There's, there's like, yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, there's, there's special handling for the ability to flip back and forth. But not special handling because they're a well-known ID is where I was going with that. Um, I think I'd have to look. I remember looking at it, and I I don't remember what my decision was, because it was a while ago, of yeah. uh, if I taught well-known ID to say, Hey, here's a well-known ID. By the way, you can here's your two IDs based off of architecture or something like that. If I made it a generic thing such that any um, directory could have fallback, uh, architecture-specific fallbacks, basically. Or if I just hard-coded those somewhere and said these are special, right? And, and there's handling for them. Um, I don't remember what I decided because there's only a handful of them. Um, right. I'm just I'm I'm interested in your thinking about the well-known IDs, con well-known ID concept in general, the, the whole space of them, directories, actions. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was a blind spot for me originally because I'm like, well, yeah, of course you know the list. It's these, you know, this is the names. You know, right. it's no big deal. And then it turns out people are like, well, what's program files folder? Like, why is that one? You know, what does that one mean? And you're like, oh, it's special. Why do I have to give it a name? You're like, well, program files folder, the name is only used for the source tree because when the Windows installer sees that well-known name, then it replaces it with, and you're like, oh, gosh. <laughs> you're like, yeah, don't you just know that? And you're like, uh, that's, a, that's a, a mistake in the language that you have to know that much to know that it just works. Um, right. Now, not a lot of people seem to have a problem with it. I guess they just, yeah, well, clearly it's just magic. Um there's enough magic in the one installer, probably for most people. It's like one more is not a breaking thing. Um, but there's not a nice ability to say, here's a well-known directory. Let's say there's a well-known directory element, um, and then, you know, the whatever we did, uh, ID, uh, or whatever the value would be, would be a set of, you know, fixed strings, because they'd have right. to be one of the well-knowns, which would have some presumably IntelliSense benefit and things like that. Um, well, so my thing about directories is that, well, one, some of it goes away with, with inline directory syntax, right? And automatic resolution of built-in directories and the removal of target dir as a thing. Right. So, so at a certain they, point, too, you are now becoming a lot more like standard actions in that you don't, you don't put them down anymore. Yeah. And, and does that need a separate element? Because, again, it's a well-known list. If you could just do directory ref program files folder, that obviously is you know a right. bit of an issue because it's a ref and that becomes a big deal. Which is, I know why you're bringing this up because it's the same thing with sequence table. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Yep, and it could be a you know an action ref, and then the ID, and then we're back to like what you were talking about before. Um, yep. The interesting thing about action ref is. It's a little different in the directory because, well, yeah, because you might want to add a condition. And adding using a ref to add a condition is kind of weird because you could have the ref in two places and both of them having conditions on them, and then you get into this, uh -huh. well, which of these refs is the one that wins? And That's so true. That's where it's it's different in that way. Yep, that is true. So directory ref, I mean, if you had action ref, it would just be like, yeah, go get the action with the standardness. And then you'd have to have a different way of saying, I am overriding the standard action with these conditions or this sequence or whatever. 
Yes. Um, although we already have that because we have overridable. Yes, but you would be able if you did it with a standard element instead of the. Well, I mean, it, in the sequence cases, it's um. Whether you have a, a custom element for it or you have uh, a single element that then refers to them all by name, right? right. There's right. to be standard versus install files elements. Right. right. Um, I'm not see. I'm, standard is fine, especially when sitting next to custom inside a sequence and the attribute action, which would be required, that all fits together nicely. Yeah. Um, I guess we could have an element called well known. <laughs> So directories are weirder because you can place them anywhere in the tree. <laughs> you can place program files folder deep in the tree. Sure, sure. If you wanted to organize it that way for your source layout, and then a whole bunch of things would you know, jump out and actually be installed the program files folder, even though it looks like they're nested under you know desktop folder or whatever. I mean, you do all kinds of kooky things. Who does that? I don't know. Most people don't, probably don't even know they can do that kind of stuff. Um, um, yeah, source. Source is an interesting concept. Yeah, especially since everybody cabs everything now. Um, that means that, you know, if you had this well-known element that had an attribute of directory, and I don't like that name, um, yeah. Standard, yeah. the sequences is, like like Sean said, the sequences are harder. So here's a, sequences are kind of like, uh, yeah, we could do that. It would probably be a little more consistent and helpful in that way. But directories are more interesting in this way. Although with the new syntax, you can start getting rid of them. Because I, you no longer I think have that, to find them. See, <laughs> so I, I'm at the point where I'm like, this is not a big benefit. If any benefit at all, it's it's minor. Um, and the directories, it's like, yeah, that that is more interesting. Except, I think inline directory syntax kind of puts it back into the. Eh. It's 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 hard to care a whole lot about it, given you know, the new capabilities that we have. Yeah, and the fact that program files folder will be automatically defined for you if you don't define it. Right. So you can just have a directory ref at the top of your thing to program files folder and then create your tree underneath that if you wanted. Because inline directory syntax is not great if you have like several folders that are nested underneath program files folder. You'd have to have, you know, directory foo program files folder colon slash, you know, foo directory bar program files folder colon slash bar, right? So you have to keep repeating that over and over versus just a directory ref program files folder and then nest all of your children underneath that. Um, yeah. Both of those are are valid authoring, and both of them work. Um, yeah. So I'm leaning right now towards just closing this. I don't think there's there's work that leads to good value here. Well, yeah. I mean, I would have. I was going to say push this into a separate issue anyway because there's still a whole bunch of deprecated stuff in the XSD that still has parsing code in core and in the extensions so there's still a lot of deprecated stuff to pull out really like the UX element still exists really huh? I didn't know that lived, lived this long wow we really went for an internal backwards compatibility. Did we actually ship a burn that had UX as the top level element? Never, never RTM. Wow. Ship beta that way. Sure, but wow. Must have been somebody. At, must have been someone that was my boss at the time that said, don't mess with this. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have ripped that out and be like, yeah, it's a beta. We should just rip it out. So, yes. Um... I am surprised it, it it must not have been flagged because I thought I got all of the the deprecation messages. All right. So on language cleanup, obviously anything that's marked deprecated, we should get rid of those. Um, 
if we need an issue to do that or not, it's fine. Um, I, I, I see what Sean's saying of promoting the sequence to concept to a higher level or to a separate issue. Um, and the well-known directory element to a separate issue if we wanted to implement that. But it's probably not worth it right now. I think the end result is that these have not created confusion. And the win is not great enough right now to bother with it. Right? I think that's kind of where we've ended up. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Not to say it doesn't come back in Wix 5, but um, probably just not worth it in Wix 4. Um, not that I know it would motivate in Wix 5, I'm just saying that it's, I guess I don't uh, disagree with this on principle, just disagree with it on practicality of the, hmm, yeah, I suppose. All right, so I think this says we're not doing this right now. It still, it just itches at me a little bit, like this in directory. It's like we, it bugs me that I don't have a solid answer for it. That's my problem. It 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 just itches at me because it's like, yeah, the answer is X, and I don't have it for these two things yet. Maybe I'll sit. Maybe this is going to cause me to go sit down as I unwind from all the other work that I've been doing. Then I'll be like, ah, go fix a bug, and then be like, all right, the answer to this is X. Let's go do it. But not right now. I don't think that's going to happen. All right, in progress, ARP display name. This is just open for the whip and the work, right, Sean? Nothing else to describe to discuss here? Nope. All right. Bernie's do better on registering. I think that's fallout from our discussion from that. And so this just needs to do work or whatever. I mean, I guess the only interesting thing for those two is should it be in preview zero or not? I don't think it has to be. Burn is interesting. Burn isn't a checkbox for preview zero, right? Yeah, it's it's in there. Building bundles is a thing, but this is additional features, so it's it, I don't think it's going to be no language changes. Yeah, hopefully no language changes, and hopefully not really a breaking change. It's just that yeah, this behaves better now for you know what we've determined is better, right? And the in progress ARP is a new feature, so we can bring it later, right? Okay. Yeah. Additive, I guess is the way to think. System overflow exception. We have an unbind or uh, overflow, or what is that called? Check overflow issue? Oh, it's been there for a while. Oh, wait. Okay. Merged open. Oh, there's another one. Sean, what's the story here? Oh, you sent one for Wix 3, too. Yeah. And this is just. When does this happen again? Somehow his checksum for the bundle was too high. Whoa. Like, I don't understand how we haven't seen this yet. <laughs> you, ha you have a custom build of burn that actually sets the checksum or something? I don't know. They have a four gig burn bundle and a check. No, I don't know how that. No, it's a checksum. I think it's always zero with like the normal compiler. Maybe he's using a different compiler. I don't know. Doesn't say how he got there. Uh, okay. Um, do we want to throw this in three? It's a time for you, Sean. Like, I'm, we're not doing build to three, but it's a small change. We've already gotten a four. It's up to you if you think we should take it in three. I trust your judgment on that one. I don't, I didn't look into how, do we not actually set the checksum in our, in the real <laughs> Wix? We don't do I anything. Didn't... So I think, I think the compilers have started, the MSVC compilers, I think have just started zeroing them out. But I could be wrong about that. I mean, we've never hit this, so <laughs> like, never been a thing. 
I mean, I think there's no risk in taking it. Yeah, I, I agree with that, too. That's why I'm like, yeah, if you want to finish this in three, that's fine. Or not. If you said you only fixed it in four, I'd be fine with that, too. So uh, your call on that open PR, I guess, is the answer. And then depending on that, this thing can be closed, right? Yeah. All right. Great. So we can toss it and burn, and Sean's on top of it now. Make the final call on that. Great. Uh, zooming. If you zoom in on the dialogue, did we determine if this is burn or this is MSI, right? Yeah. So this is MSI. I mean, if you zoom, then we don't control any of this. Like, we're not involved well, they, at all. They don't actually mean zoom. They mean scaling. Okay. And good luck getting 1280 by 1024 at 400%. I tried. My monitor wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, or my windows wouldn't let me do it. This is um, external. And... It's fine. It's like, yeah, great. Go take up the Windows installer team. They can decide what they're going to do with it, which is they're going to punt it. But anyway. Yeah, and it's been over a week, and I've not gotten a response to what they were expecting it to do. Right. If they were like, oh, it should just relay out to be different. I'm like, oh, okay, well, no. When it's installer, it doesn't, doesn't support do layout. Yep. All right. Remove support for payload verification by authentic code. Yes, I think this is this is true. This, this should be fine. Um, this is there. There's never been anything but trouble, and ever since we switched to it, we've had no problems. Switch to hash-based payload verification, we've had no problems. So if we do this for 5247, can we say that's obsolete? Uh, what's the issue? Um, they were kind of they were reusing cache IDs and kind of oh. re relying on the authentic code to be able to put different yeah, versions no. in there. No, yeah, no, that's that. Yeah, that this is junk. Yeah, no, this is. Yeah, nope. Can't do that. <laughs> Nothing in the system is going to have that work out well for you. So no, I agree with you. Five two four seven is not a not a bug. Or it, it was a bug that authentic code let them slip through. That was the bug. So we're taking a hard line here that when we kill authentic code, there's absolutely nothing other than you know bit for bit identical packages that we're going to support. Yeah, I, I mean, there is a feature in the world of changing bundle compositions on the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that we've always come come down against. Yeah, like well, it's just a tremendous amount of work, particularly from a security point of view. It's non. I I, I don't know if it's possible. I yeah, a certain level, um, and uh, using authentic code to slip through is a very very narrow gap. That I just don't think is worth it, all the way around. And it opens up other problems, right, where people can slip in bad stuff old vulnerable things so into a newer safer bundle so it's just yeah just doesn't yeah i i think it's just hashes i think that it's just yeah i think it's the hard line i always worry about taking hard lines in the world cuz you know there's always the exception to the rule but it's just not worth it it's like yeah no, just build your bundle again have to. Okay. Yeah. Bob, did I have an alarm? No, I'm, I'm oh, okay. Yeah, no, that was, that's fine. Okay. We we we've we've taken the hard line before that that you know we're not going to do the uh, um, updated manifest thing. No, right? if someone wants to go out and design the whole thing in a way that works, I would definitely entertain it. Right. <laughs> But nobody has ever done that in a way that's reasonable. Like the Visual Studio guys went off and built these complex and crazy systems and really added some real complexity to burn along the way. 
And in the end, it all would have been easier if they just would have rebuilt their bundle. Like in the end, just built the bundle again. Well, and that's that's the answer, right? The burn doesn't support updating manifests on the fly. Yeah. Instead, it supports update bundles. Yeah. So, and if someone comes along and says, "Oh, by the way, here's the design you're missing that makes it elegant and work well and secure," <laughs> I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, that's brilliant!" I, I that's I would say something almost exactly to that effect. Um, and not brilliant in the, the negative way. Brilliant in the, that is truly fantastic. Uh, and I haven't, because I haven't seen it. That is an insanely complicated and a mess. Um, so, yeah, no, we're not doing that. All right, moving on. Spent more time on it than I probably should have. Review bootstrapper action cache planning. Oh, okay. It's not fully implemented. I could see it not being fully implemented. Well, it's implemented against the design goals. <laughs> oh, really? Design such that a package can be leaked in the package cache. The bundle's not registering an ARP. I see. So you can say, cache this bundle, and it doesn't register itself in ARP. So you end up with all these things in the cache. Yeah. And, nothing and nothing will registered. ever clean it up. Yeah. No, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, I mean, it came from Visual Studio. Oh, really? Oh. Thereby guaranteeing that it's weird? <sighs> well, well that's what like Sean implied, but maybe he did. <laughs> um, Jeez, and you didn't even work there. Think about how Rob and I feel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we did, we did good work. We, we did. did a lot of things. And then they went off and did a very strange thing after we left that got really complicated, and I never truly understood what they were doing. And well, I, I mean, never... this is one of those things that we got from Visual Studio okay. late in 3. Well, then... Yeah, I don't think we should. We don't have to keep this. Then. Is your suggestion to remove it? Remove the feature? Well, no, it's just to actually make it register in ARP. And with the other changes I'm doing, That's it should bad. automatically take care of the leaking the stuff in the package yep. cache. Yep, I'm I'm done with that. That that if that all makes it click together nicely, then yes, by all means. So does that mean registering the bundle if it's not installed and then you run cache? Caching will register the bundle. Yeah. Uh, Even sorry. if it's not installed. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's the, the reason I well yeah, sorry. The reason I ask is is that my impression was so you know we have layout and we have cache and these two things play together uh, at least on the edges. Um, my impression was that the cache action was designed to repair an existing cache. Sorry, uh, repair what mm -hmm. the bundle should have cached in the package cache during an installation. Right. It, it's to so, repair the package cache, not to actually repair the installed packages. Right. Make correct. sure all the packages are in the package cache, but don't go through all the work of repairing the individual installations. Right. Right. Yeah. No, so wait, it's, that's not what it does. Well, do you know why it was okay. there? Did you ever get an answer to that, Sean? Well, I mean, what Heath said was, they wanted to be able to, like, pre-download things. So, like, you know, if an update was available, they were going to pre-download the packages, stick it in the cache on your machine, so that when you go to install it, then it's already there. And if you never install it, then it's always there forever. Yeah. And then when you get the next version, 
and let's say you skip that update because I skip updates all the time, personally, then you end up with all these pre-cached things and there's nothing referring to them, therefore they never get cleaned up and I end up using or end up losing disk space because a whole bunch of stuff was cached and you've never kept the thing to clean it up. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a, yeah. Not unlike the set of decisions that we were getting at that time period. Um, from the, like, we want this scenario without the, impl the knock-on effects and then we'd get a fix later with fixes or attempts to fix the knock-on effects. Yeah, that was kind of, that matches the kind of things that we were getting for a while there. Then the downside to this is that if you don't register it, you, you still have to elevate because you have to elevate to put it in a protected package cache. Yeah. Okay, yes. As long as it registers. Now, the downside is we're back to the, you know, but I didn't install it problem. Sure. <laughs> but you, <laughs> but you okay. did. I, I mean, but you, I, I hear you, Bob, but you did. Yeah. The, the problem with the other one where it's still registered, but you didn't install is that the only thing that got installed was like .NET Framework or something yeah. that is arguably not you. Yeah. So for this cache action, if you if you want it to do like a repair of the package cache, I mean we can add that to this issue. Well, that should work, right? I mean, because it'll end up being repair the package cache and repair registration, right? Well, I don't. I think I think if you want to do that, that should be repair. Like if you want yeah. cache. I think that's, you know, it's less than install, so it, why wouldn't it uninstall the package? Um, that's a fair question. The ability to repair the package cache is, is a good thing. So I, I, I you know, so, so for example, you should be able to rerun an installed bundle with the cache action just to ensure that the, the package cache is is correct. And you should be able to run it before you install a package, before you, sorry, before you install a bundle, just to ensure that you can, you have access to all the files. Say that you, you want to install um, Bob Studio, um, but you're about to, to to board a plane because you live in a fantasy world where there isn't a worldwide pandemic. So you, you cash, you, you could do a layout. Sure. But you want to cash it to save, you know, precious microseconds when you're on the plane. Um, so you, you run the bundle with cash to get everything downloaded and then you can from ARP run repair or install or whatever. So these actions make sense to me. Well, I mean, I think repairing the cache when the bundle is already installed is different from caching the bundle without actually installing anything yet. Uh, does it need to be? In both cases, the idea is you end up with a correct cache. Yeah, Sean I mean, pointed out that because cache is lower than install, that if you said, here, I have all these things installed. Now here, please cache all these things. It's going to be like, okay, great. Let me uninstall all these packages and put them back in the cache state. Oh, As opposed I see. to just repair these things in the cache and keep them installed. Okay. That is a very good point. It's a difference between making sure that this package is installed um, and checking the cache and doing a repair operation. Like, you know, it's like, here, the, the state is installed, right, without doing a repair. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know that we need to design this here. Um, I, I th Where you're coming from, Sean, sounds correct to me, right? That there should be an ARP entry at the end of this so that you can clean these things up. Yeah, and it, it sounds like I, I'll create another issue 
for like a repair cash action or something like that. Sure. I think there's something about repair in and of it, all of itself. It's the difference between an action and a state, right? It's an intention, right? You're saying here, repair versus just installed. You're like, oh, it is installed. I don't have any work to do versus repair, which is it's there. Now run it again, right? It, you, those are the action of repair, right, takes into account its state. And I think that's the difference here, that this is the action of cash. Um, and the, I don't know that the action of cash should say, I will remove things. I will uninstall packages. Certainly, I agree with that, yeah. Right. And that may be the the, the tweak of it. But I, I, I agree with the rest of this. <sighs> Takes me back to a far dark place. All right. Unhelpful behavior when including multiple BAs. Uh, one, one interrupt. Can, do we want to put this in 4.0? Is there something we want to... 6303, is that something we want to put in? My hope is that 6303 is like 6297 and 6296. They, they, these all kind of go together. That I was mean, my understanding. 60, 6303 would be breaking. Oh, yeah, the fact that we're going to register these ARP. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's, it's a bug fix that is going to in, in add behavior. You're going to get ARP entries you didn't get back, get in the past. Yes, I agree with that. So, yeah, I think that needs to happen in four. Okay. Are you volunteering? I will do it if no one else does it. <laughs> are you volunteering? I see. Bob and I are not getting to burn <laughs> functionality the way things are going right now, given how deep, my, at least my bug issues are. I, I, I am very happy that you're in burn because I would not be getting to it anytime soon. I could say that. And, and I don't, I, I'm. I don't know. I'd be okay if this came in after preview zero. Just because it's, I don't think it's a huge case. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Unhelpful behavior when including multiple BAs. Um, ensure there's one and only one row, and then you get a message like that. Okay, great. So this needs an error message to go along with this, or a better error message, maybe, is just what it needs? Because it has an error message, right? Well, I, was, I mean, the comment says the linker is supposed to catch it, and it's not, so is the comment wrong as well? Um, oh, that comment's from the binder? Yeah, this is in the binder. Oh. Um, in the Bootstrap application, there used to be uh, the internal IDs of whatever the well-known ID is for the US mm -hmm. container. And I think that was set um, in the compiler, which means it would have collided in the linker if you gave two of them. And it's possible with the changes about how the bootstrapper application DLL can be defined separate from the bootstrapper application, that now you can sneak your way around. Well, the, that, that I'd have collision. to look at it again. But the bootstrapper application DLL is the one that's creating the container ID. Yep. So. That code still exists, just with a different element, which should so, blow up in the same way. Yeah, that's if you have two things with the same ID being linked, unless. So unless I mess that up, like somehow deleted it when I shouldn't have. I, I'm, I want to say that code is still there. The IDs are still being created, for the container. Okay. Yeah, okay, then um, I don't, this has changed, obviously, you've worked on this, so um, yeah, I I agree with your, I, I, I understand your concern, and yes, and we should go figure that out, because um, I don't know what it's, which way it's going. If, uh, how to say this, it would be good to know if this is a, a linker missing something, or if the, the design has changed enough that the burn bundle has to just handle it itself now. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a bug in here, and either the linker needs, or I guess it could be all the way up in the compiler, but the somewhere in this pipeline it needs needs to get fixed. So we should go hunt this down. Um, I'll if, take it. This sounds interesting. Okay. Well, 
that Bob will learn something about the new Bootstrap application. Yeah, you'll know more about it than I do at this point. So that's part of the reason by Ruby. All right. So Sean came to the party with four other issues he wants to talk about, um, but I'm going to turn into a pumpkin here um, soon. Um, do you have any of these four that you want to talk about more than others, Sean, just so I make sure we get through the ones that you want most? Um, the breaking change one? Which one is that? This one? No. The XML one? The XML one, yep. Yeah. Returns S false and E not found. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this was a terrible, horrible decision. So my question was, is it really a 4x, or does it need to happen in 4.0? Oh, it's, it, this is a, a nasty breaking change. The world will explode because of this one. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, oh, no hyperbole here. <laughs> OK, that's a lot of hyperbole. Um, any use of XML get attribute will have to be revisited after this. So it is a massive breaking change. So it's not 4x. It has to be 4.0 or 5.0 or 6.0 or Yeah, it's a major breaking change. Opinions on If we should. <laughs> I mean, it's been assigned to Jacob forever. <laughs> I thought he would do it eventually, but I guess not. So I didn't look into exactly how bad of an idea this would be. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. The bad idea was using S false for anything. It was a very early design flaw that I thought S false was an interesting concept and should be used for anything at all. <laughs> Maybe I should have said, I don't know just how risky this is. Um, well, you basically go through the whole Wix tool set and you look for every use of XML get attribute. And all the things that use XML get attribute under the covers, like XML get named item. Okay. As Jacob points out. Oh, okay. So is this like a preview zero or never thing? <laughs> no, but it's only... mostly it's mostly in the ex in the extensions. To be fair, so it doesn't have burn in preview zero. <gasps> oh God, you're absolutely right. Yeah, but it just burns XML processing, which is itself. So, um, I, no, I don't think this has to be preview zero um, just because the API of you know, DUtil, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Um, but it has to be 4.0 if we're doing it in 4. So it does not have to be preview zero, but it has to be 4.0 if we're doing it in 4. So let's, that's, that's, let's change this to milestone 4.0 and it will show up on our radar of whether we're doing it or not. Um, and if not, then it has to move to 5.0. Or go away, decide that we're never going to change this thing. But this bites you. Like this, this has, we have had bugs because of it. And they're just bad. Like bugs as in like, you know, slept, slipped through for a long time and nobody really noticed that weird things were happening. And it was not good. Yes, this is 4.0. It does not have to be preview zero. Does that answer the question, Sean? Yep. All right. Um, one more of the three. The five two six six, I guess. The I don't want to talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we asked people, "Is this happening on newer versions of and Windows?" Someone said yes. And someone said yes. But they didn't provide any log files. Yeah. See, this hasn't been coming up again. It's possible people are hitting this. We 
We don't have a solution to this either, do we? Shot no. a bomb. I mean, I I, no. well, we do. We stop using run ones, but we can't. I don't think we can. <laughs> no, we can't. Like, sorry. Um, well, I mean, no, we talked about alternatives. You know, we, there might, it might be possible to use a scheduled task, for example, oh. which might very well replace our run once problems with antivirus with scheduled task problems with antivirus. But right. um, it might it might solve this particular problem. No. It's still closed. I mean, uh, I'm fine with leaving it closed as, like, we don't have a way to fix this. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Well, the, the fixing this causes so many other implications, like interacting with scheduled tasks uh, to do what we get with the run once, that it's just not worth it for these people. Sorry. Just, sorry. It's just, yep. Um, there's going to have to be more of an outcry and more people coming along before we bother with this, I guess, is what it comes down to. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Should we reopen it? No. <laughs> no. I mean, someone, yeah, can add should... that, someone can add that comment if they want, but no, we're not reopening it. <laughs> not, I mean, we're not. Someone's going to have to come, again, someone's going to have to come with a solution to the whole problem that solves the security and the design issues and all that kind of stuff. And if they do that and it's a great solution, I'll once again say, that's brilliant. Um, assuming it doesn't make things worse, I'll be like, that's great. Then we can implement it. Until then, no. I just, no. So that means we can close a different bug in 4.0 that's okay. complaining about run once and antivirus. Using the same there's nothing we can do about it? Yeah. 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 I mean, if someone comes up with a solution to that problem, then fantastic. Let's, let's talk about that. But are, are these really apples and apples? Well, I mean, if, if our message is we're using run once because that's the only viable thing to meet what we need, I think the run once is a little, the run once now I think about it is a little different because it has the, um, if you can't write one once, let me run with degraded functionality. Like if you explicitly, because of antivirus, can't run this install because of run once, let me run uh, with degraded functionality. Where here, other people doing the, are, are causing burn burn correctly using run once key is being re-triggered because something else is doing things to run once. You, you see, that, that's the difference, right? It's the difference between we could forego all the, the value that run once gives us um, to get through antivirus and hope you don't need any of that value. Well, um, except we can't. See, th this is where... <laughs> today we can't. You'd have to design that feature that says how we could deal with not having run once registered. Well, no, I'm suggesting we can't because attempting to use run once triggers the behavior. So we can never be in a position where we know that we can't use it and therefore should degrade. Does it, oh, does it kill our process? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, These okay. things are nasty. I, for, I, I, I forgot. I thought it just said no, and then we could. No, 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 that would be fine, right? Yeah, that would okay. just be, oh, uh, it's an error, okay. But no, this is like, you then use run once, we will, we will kill you. You touch this key and you die. Um, yeah. Then, then, yeah, no, then it falls in this bucket. <laughs> Outside process, something that's normal for us to do, outside process, is completely affecting us, and we can't react to that um, in any reasonable way. Like, let's go search for this antivirus. No, we're not searching for random antivirus. So like, that, in that case, I, I agree, is the same thing, and then they, they end up evolving to the same case okay. because they end up killing us. Um, right. That. But I guess uh, my point is that it's one thing to say, oh, you know, you're installing a driver – making you very rare to begin with, and it only affects XP, maybe, then, you know, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Um, but, you know, we have this problem where it affects people with certain antivirus that aren't installing drivers and on modern OSs. I guess at a certain point, we're saying we're using run once. Is that the end of the discussion? 
unless someone comes up with an elegant design that works around all the issues and yada yada yada. Yep. I, I'm not going to, I don't trust the scheduled task concept, right? Like, and I'm certainly not interested enough to go and try to make that work well for all the scenarios that we need it to work well for. I think that that's where I'm at right now. Because you're saying this is background levels of radiation noise. Yes. So yes. we don't, yeah. we don't it's, it's care. Basically, it's, it's basically, yeah, don't use that antivirus. I mean, we just, we can't. Yes, it kills okay. all burn bundles. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm. And maybe someone will come up and say that antivirus has won the world. It is on every Windows machine. You have to adapt. Then we'll talk about it. But that doesn't feel like the case right now. I hope at that point we would talk about it, yes. Yeah, right? (laughs) The other thing is we don't get a lot of noise on either of these issues anymore. So That's fair. That's fair. People aren't afraid of commenting on dead things. So we'll go from there. All right. Son, I'm sorry I'll have to say these other two. I will write them down and put them into the um, the hopper for two weeks from now. Let's go back and talk about what we're doing. Anything else going on? Stuff out there. Uh, things. I know I think it's mostly just us right now. I haven't seen anybody else say hi. Um, so I think, let's see, two weeks is, oh, that's Chris's. Or New Year's Eve. Oh, we're probably not doing that. Man, there was... Oh, no, well. Yeah, another Thursday. No, sorry, that's the 7th. Okay. Two days, Rob, and then two weeks. So, anybody know how bad I am with dates and everything? Yeah, it's not good. Um, All right, so the 7th, I think that should work, right? Normal time, yeah. normal place, all that. That should be back... Life should be generally back to normal. After the 4th, generally things seem to be rolling. So, let's do that. The 7th, January 7th, we'll be back. We'll pick up again where we left off, and we will um, do more, a little more triage. We'll see how many come over in the next two weeks and two days. Um, I think that's it. That's what I got. You guys have anything else? Not for me. Mm -hmm. Sean's all quiet, so I'm going to take that as a no. All right, so on that note, we'll be back in two weeks plus two days, which will be January 7th, and we will probably do all this again plus more updates on Waste 4, I'm sure. All right. Until then, all of you have a very Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. Bye.